You tracked a what with my puppy? Get him. All kidding aside, this is JP Longbotham. I sold him this pup earlier this year, and he's taking him out on an American bison hunt, the great buffalo. What's happening here in this setup is that he's tracking a cow buffalo that someone took. He's a guy, people pay him to come hunt buffalo for, for meat and sport. Uh, you'll see the cow laying on the ground over there on the side, but what you're gonna see around the cow is the rest of the herd circling up to protect the cow. The end of tracks is very dangerous for two reasons. First of all, live game animals that are wounded become very dangerous. Animals that normally would run from dogs and run from you will attack and can kill you or hurt you terribly. Okay, buck deer, cornered, will try to kill a dog and they will come after people. Now, this issue compounds when you have a huge quarry such as a buffalo, okay? So these animals can very easily kill the hunter. They can very easily kill a dog. In this case, we have a second problem dealing not with just the buffalo that's been wounded. You can see the cow is clearly completely dead. So the track is basically a location problem to solve, but the rest of the herd around there poses extreme danger. End of tracks is one of the main reasons that I feel like a, a blue lacy dog is one of the better options of breeds to track where you can track with no lead and you're dealing with dangerous game. A lot of breeds, the smaller cold nosed breeds like the Datsun can get you to the end of the track, but they can very easily be killed or hurt by deer or any other animal. Um, also larger dogs such as Labradors, uh, Bloodhounds and things like that. They may be gritty enough, but they may not have the agility to get out of the way. So Labradors can very easily get gored and killed by deer. You know, cut vests can help and things like that can help. But the power of a blue lacy dog is their agility as a herding dog, a herding dog and a bay dog. A bay dog is one that corners game through its agility and holds it there. A catch dog, by contrast, is like a pit bull that goes straight in without regard for its own safety and clamps on and holds on to a cow or a hog or any other animal, okay? Two very different types of instinct. Problem with catch dogs is they get killed. You can armor them up, but then they can't, they don't have the stamina and the ability to run out and deal with far distances without overheating and such. Okay, so a bay dog and a herding dog, obviously you know what a herding dog is, dealing with cattle and sheep and goats, etc. Okay, there are different types of herding dogs as well. You have healers that, 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 that go in and bite directly. You have border collies that, 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 that kind of use eye and move on command. Okay, a lacy is a, in the category of cattle dogs that we call bay dogs. Okay, a bay dog it deals with game a lot differently. They're gritty and they will nip and they will bite and touch the cattle to some degree as needed. But a bay dog's power is their speed and agility. So day, bay dogs can deal with uh, cattle with, the, with horns that are much larger than them, that are very aggressive, that are, that are trying to kill them. And a lacy is constantly moving in, out, around. And then two laces, by contrast, can actually even more control game by not getting hit. One of the things I noticed that a lot of people tend to think, a lot of hunters, a lot of sportsmen, and, and cattlemen as well, they have this impression that the a bigger dog is going to be more powerful and going to handle a bigger animal. Um, I don't find that to be true. Uh, it, it may be true to some degree. Um, I think there's an optimal size. However, when you're dealing with a thousand plus animal with horns and hooves, a dog that goes straight in without respect for its own safety can very easily get killed. Okay, so I find that smaller dogs that are quicker and their strength and their power is their agility. So instead, think about it. If you go after an animal that's a thousand pounds, if you go after a bully that's twice the size of you, think like David, okay? Think like David when he killed Goliath, okay? Don't think like a dummy, okay? You don't go in there at 110 pounds and take on a giant in hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's not using the brain. I like smarter dogs, I like lacy dogs, they go in and they get they pull back out. So when that animal is trying to hit with its horns, it's missing and it's getting tired. When it's trying to kick, it's missing, it's getting tired. When it's trying to come at the dog this way, the dog comes behind it. 
that animal's turning around and getting more tired. That is how a bay dog, in my opinion, specifically blue lacy dogs, will control animals at the end of tracks or when working cattle. When I saw this video, when JP sent this video over to me, of uh, my dog Crockett, I say my dog, I raised it, he, he's the one that trained it. Okay, so he did the heart part. I just put the good dog together up. to create the blood that created this dog. And you can see Get he's him. got another older dog that he's working with as well. Get him. Okay, but you can see Crockett Get him. has no fear of these buffalo, but he's also not an idiot about it. He's going in, he gets to the end of the track and they're like, what in Get the him. heck is going on here? And what are all they Get doing him. here? And then he comes back, JP sends him back in with confidence. Good and dog. then he goes in and does his natural instinctive cow dog thing, which is to push those cattle back. So pushing those, not cattle, I'm sorry, in this case, bison. So when he pushes those bison back, then the hunter can, can safely get in there and retrieve the buffalo. I talked to JP about this and he said, it's a very dangerous situation at the end of an American bison track that they will protect the animal that's downed and it's extremely dangerous. So he needs the dogs to not only locate the game, but then he needs to get the, the, the bison back away from the area so that they can load the animal and get it out of there. This is also a very common use for cattle dogs. You'll see a lot of people use a cow dog because people get killed by getting trampled by their own cattle. This is a thing that happens. I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it happens. You feed your cattle every day with a big bag of cubes, and then one day you go out there and you're really hungry and maybe you've been doing this for 30 years and now you're 80 years old and all of a sudden these cattle get too eager and they push on each other and you fall down and an 80 year old man is getting trampled by his own cattle. And I heard this from my neighbor across the river. Charles told me this story just the other day. Tragic story. So a lot of what cow dogs will do, like also when my dogs are in an ATV or in my vehicle, they have to keep those cattle from, because the cattle will come in, they'll break your windows, they'll, they'll do whatever they have to do. When they smell food in that vehicle, they broke a taillight in a Ranger when, when my hand didn't have a dog with him the other day. Anyway, I couldn't be more pleased to have seen this video from JP. Good job, JP. Oh, any of y'all interested in buffalo or American bison hunting, I should say, uh, you need to contact JP. I put the, uh, his website in the link below, JP Longbotham, Old Sorehead Outfitters. Old Sorehead Outfitters, great man hunting out in West Texas. I think he does, he does Sand Hill Crane hunts. He may do some dove hunts. Oh, and by the way, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel because he also hunts water buffalo and he just sent me a video of Crockett on a water buffalo.